Hi there, Marius here with the Resuscitation Coach. On this channel we do all things resuscitation, so please consider subscribing. In our second video in our ECG Made Easy series, we'll be reviewing the anatomy of the ECG and look at the five-step method of interpreting a basic ECG. Let's jump straight in. Here we go. So let's review the placement of the ECG electrodes. It should be noted that the color lead positioning are different in various parts of the world. In a lot of countries, usually based on the UK education system, you will see the following configuration. Red to right, yellow to left, and green to the chest. I remember the colors by thinking of a traffic light or traffic signal. In systems around the world, based on the American education system, you will find the following configuration. White to right, red to ribs, and what's left to left. So be familiar with the equipment available in your organization. So let's briefly discuss the mean electrical vector. Team, always remember that the electrical signal of the heart has a direction and typically it's as what we see with the red arrow. ECG and monitor leads look at the signal from different directions, from positive and negative electrodes, based on whether the signal is moving towards or away from certain electrodes, an upright or negative deflection occurs on the ECG. If the electrical conduction moves toward a positive lead, a positive or upward deflection occurs. And if the current moves towards a negative electrode, meaning away from the positive lead, a downward or negative deflection happens. Lump leads are snapshots of the 12 lead ECG. The leads differ in morphology and are not reliable as a diagnostic tool beyond monitoring. In this regard, it is important to obtain a 12-lead ECG for diagnostic purposes in a stable patient when a significant change in rhythm occurs. Similarly, a post-conversion 12-lead ECG should be done when a rhythm abnormality resolves or is converted to a normal rhythm. These ECGs may be invaluable in the diagnosis of an abnormal rhythm. So let's look at the three limb leads using the Eindhoven's triangle. In lead one, you will find that it's negative on the right arm, but positive on the left arm. In lead two, you'll find that it's negative on the right arm, but positive on the left leg. And then lead three, you will find that it's negative on the left arm, but positive on the left leg. For the purpose of this basic ECG series, we'll be using lead 2, as it looks at the heart, matching the usual electrical vector. So let's review the lines and calibration of an ECG strip. In one big box, you will find five small boxes horizontally in a row which represents time and five small boxes vertically which reflects millivolts. We'll be focusing only on time during this basic ECG program. The millivolts start playing a role in the interpretation for advanced ECGs. So let's enlarge one of the horizontal rows. Each small box equals 0.04 seconds. So for instance, if you have five boxes in a row, it's five times four, which equals 20, meaning 0 0.2 seconds. Let's review on the top at the question mark. This is what we call the PR interval. And we will discuss this later on in the session. Here we see four small boxes in a row. 
So we can say 4 times 4 equals 16. So this means that it's 0 0.16 seconds. So let's look at a way to quickly approximate a heart rate, which is a useful tool in an emergency situation or during an ACLS or PALS course. To use the sequence method, you need to memorize the rate intervals of 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50, 40, 30. This method estimates the heart rate. There are other methods and tools available and we'll review others later on in this presentation. However, this method does not require a 3 or a 6 second strip and can be used easily at the bedside. First, select a QRS complex that falls as close as possible to a solid line. Then estimate the rate by counting the heavy lines. Then use your method 300, 150, 100, 75, 60, 50, 40, 30. And it should be noted that this sequence method is a good option for regular rhythms. So let's try this. So let's choose one of the QRS complexes which are falling on top of a solid pink line. If the next QRS fell on this line, the rate would be 300. Then 150, 100, 75. So this rate is approximately 75. Another option is to use the big box method. Count the number of big boxes between the QRS complexes. Then you take 300 divided by the number of big boxes and that will give you an average heart rate. This technique works well with regular rhythms. So let's count the big boxes between the R waves. We have one, we have two, we have three, and we have four. So 300 divided by four equals 75. A commonly used technique is the six second strip method. The six second strip method, you need to have a strip where you have 30 big boxes. So how does the technique work? You count the number of QRS complexes within the 6 second strip. You multiply that number by 10 and that will give you the average rate. The 6 second strip method you can use both for regular and irregular rhythms. So let's try the technique. So let's count the QRS complexes. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, meaning 7 times 10, the average rate is approximately 70. So let's start reviewing the anatomy of the ECG. The P wave is the first wave in the cardiac cycle and it represents atrial depolarization and the spread of electrical impulses throughout the right and left atria. The duration of the P wave is usually less than 0.1 seconds or less than 2.5 small boxes. If the left atrium is enlarged, depolarization takes longer and P wave duration will increase to equal or above 0.12, for instance. Let's look at the PR interval. The PR interval is measured from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the Q wave. Normally it measures 0.12 to 0.2 seconds or 3 to 5 small boxes. If it's more than 5 small boxes it means it is prolonged. The QRS represents the spread of electrical impulses through the ventricles called ventricular depolarization. Normally it measures between 0.06 to 0.1 seconds or 1.5 to 2.5 small squares. But as default we use 0.12 seconds or 3 small boxes. 
If the QRS is prolonged more than three small boxes, it means there's some sort of a ventricular delay. We measure the QRS complex from the beginning of the Q wave all the way to your R, you have your S, and up to there. Now let's look at the T wave. Now your T wave represents ventricular repolarization. We will not be using the T wave as part of this basic interpretation of the ECG. So let's review the anatomy of the ECG. So here you have your isoelectrical line, then you have your P wave, which represents atrial depolarization, then you have your QRS complex, which represents ventricular depolarization, and you have your T wave, which represents ventricular repolarization. We also need to think about the PR interval. Your PR interval gets measured from the beginning of the P wave at the point where the P leaves the isoelectrical line to your Q wave here. And again, it should be three to five small boxes. If it's more than five small boxes, it means the PR interval is delayed. Your QRS complex is measured from the beginning of your Q wave to here, and it should be less than three small boxes. If it's more than three boxes, it means the QRS is wide. On your ECG, you also have this area called the SD segment, and we will not cover the SD segment in this session, but it's important for advanced ECGs. What you should remember about the ST segment, if you see ST elevation, that represents myocardial infarction, and if you see ST depression, that means myocardial ischemia. You also have an area called your QT interval, and again, we will not discuss the QT interval during this basic ECG session, but the QT interval represents the full time frame of ventricular depolarization and ventricular repolarization. Using a standard, consistent and routine approach to rhythm analysis is the key to success as is anything in resuscitation. The method we use during this basic ECG program is the five-step method. The five basic questions lead to correct analysis and diagnosis of the majority of rhythm abnormalities. 1. Is the rate within the normal range for a sinus rhythm 60 to 100 beats per minute? Or is the rate fast, above 100 beats per minute, or slow, below 60 beats per minute? 2. Is the rhythm regular or irregular? Measure the distances between the R waves. If they remain the same, the rhythm is regular. If they consistently changing, it means the rhythm is irregular. 3. Can P waves be identified? Is there one P wave for each QRS and one QRS for every P wave, meaning one to one conduction? 4. PR interval. Are the PR interval normal? meaning three to five small boxes, or is it more than five small boxes, meaning some sort of a block? Five, is the QRS normal or wide? A normal QRS complex is three small boxes or less, and a wide QRS complex is anything more than three small boxes. For providers, knowing the answer to these questions will allow them to analyze a basic ECG and navigate the appropriate treatment algorithm and following the correct treatment pathway. If you benefited from this video, kindly like, subscribe and smash that notification bell and please leave a comment down below as it helps us with the YouTube algorithm. We'll see you in the next ECG video. Have a fantastic day!